Yeah, so kind of moving off of the Bucks here, but maybe a little bit in the Bucks. This week we saw Urban Liar get fired. Wow. Um, Adios, Urbano. And, and uh, uh, you know, now they're saying they're not going to pay the guy that they have him fired for just cause. I can't wait to see how this legal battle ensues. But, right. you know, there's rumors that Byron Leftwich is headed to Jacksonville. You know, Byron uh, Leftwich. Okay, you know, no, I mean, you say first... you say that, but that's another no. factor into what I just talked about. Right now, yeah, he's I, the I, don't, I don't want to see him go. I mean, I I think the philosophy problem. You know, sometimes yeah. this stuff comes from. You know, where's, comes from... where's it coming from? You've got a guy that's that's never been an OC before. This is his first gig. Well, hang on, this guy did. We did win a Super Bowl last year, so he ain't yes. that bad. Yes. All right, oh, no, but, I agree. But I think they're caught up in this mentality that I'm going to throw whenever we want, and we were here to prove it, this, like, stupid mentality, like, instead of being smart like other coaches. Tell me this. If we had the Saints coaches with this team, where do you think we'd be? Probably undefeated. Undefeated, probably. That's how, you know. So, I guess I wasn't proving my point very well, was I? (laughs) (laughs) No, you proved my point. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, listen, I want Byron to be great. TSG won. TSG's double one. Yeah. <laughs> TSG backup. Bring bring, bring yeah. the boy back out here. Uh, I'm not gonna. I just don't want to down on him like that because he has no. A good I, job I, too. I agree with you. It, yeah. it perfe- I'm not saying this as a person or, or or as a you know his character and all. This is more of a strictly as a job. He he doesn't seem to me like he's performing his job to the best of his ability. And there's probably people that could do it better, right? So. Nothing aside from Byron, the person, he's been nothing but great for our community. He seems to be a great person for the team. Like He's not causing any problems, but his play calling and his philosophy, I don't think, are getting the job done. I think the head Plain coach is simple. a big part of that, too. These guys, you maybe, know. Maybe. I don't know. Who's no risk it, no decision. biscuit. Yeah. That's no, his I, boss. That's listen, his let's boss. be honest, though. How many decisions do they let Tom make? Right, See, that, that, and that's what I'm saying. It. I don't know who's making these calls on third and two for a 30-yard pass deep to, you know, Brett Perryman. I, I don't and, know who's making that call. And here's what I think's happening. I think but these guys are blowing is, Tom Brady up so much in private. Dude, you're the best. You're the greatest of all time. You could do – he's saying, we know he fought him last season. We know the rumors, and, and he won't talk about it publicly, but he's like, I need to run it more, and we need to do some short passing games so we can open up the long passing game, right? And then they kind of came to a middle, and he would every once in a while still throw it, and we'd be like, oh, what the hell is that? You know, probably not a good time for that. I think he was kind of compromising. And then I think this year, also because he's trying to get – there's a belief out there that he's trying to get the most valuable player in the league uh, award and that they're trying to get it for him. But set that aside, they I think they've got his brain where like, you're the greatest of all time, man. Just sling it. We got the players that can do it. And he's like – Third and two. This is not his yeah, mentality. You don't call that play. That's it. Shouldn't be he, an option, right? Well, on, now there, there's going to be options because you have to draw people out of there. And Gronk's going to draw it. people out of. He shouldn't throw had, there. And I had this conversation with my neighbor earlier in the afternoon, where there are times when you have to run a pass, a deep pass on third and two. Yeah. You know, situationally, with the field the way it is, early in the game, you need to throw it or put it on tape. Something. You need to throw it to open it up to where the defense has to think about it the next time. Okay. Right. So you have to, you know, it's a game of chess. You have to put your pieces out there and sacrifice a pawn in order to get the big Bishop move later on. So I'm not saying that, but what we're seeing week in, week out, time and time again on critical situations, Mm -hmm. someone is making a call, whether it's Byron, whether it's Bruce, whether it's Clyde Christensen or Tom Brady or, you know, I don't know who, whoever Todd smart. Bowles is grandma. Somebody's making a call that says we are better at throwing the deep ball than we are the short ball or flat out just running it. Put Vita Vea's big 50, number 50 Samoan booty back there right in front of Leonard Fournette. Mm. Put him on Jensen's butt. Get your two yards. Then you can run your first and 10, whatever you want. You can totally. run play action, RPO, totally totally whatever. Agree. But totally they're not agree. doing that. I would pull the Belichick and let him mm-hmm. keep running that sweep with Rojo because right. they weren't stopping it. So hold on, <laughs> I think I think that what we're going to see here with the uh, with the Byron Leftwich situation is where does he stand on the totem pole with the Buccaneers? Okay, and by that I mean is it going to be? Are they telling Leftwich, hey, you know, you've got a chance to be the head coach here when Arian steps down, or are they telling Todd Bowles that? 
And Byron knows the answer to that. And he's not talking about it. Uh, um, uh, uh, Light, Jason Light knows the answer to that. He's the general man. Well, he's I mean, he's not he's talking about it either. So By- but- Byron left, which is having some success in the OC role, regardless of what you guys think. He is one of the better OCs in the NFL, and he was the quarterback the of the one, Jacksonville the Jaguars number one offense for years. in the NFL. Absolutely. Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it's almost like a homecoming for him to go to okay. Jacksonville. So, all right. We'll see what happens. I'm- I'm willing to take that risk. As a fan, I'm willing to let him go to Jacksonville or anywhere else, become a head coach, and let somebody else come in here and prove to me that I'm wrong with the play calling. Dude, it was, so it, we it was could just see, my, ignorance, we, my ignorance and not his play calling. Yeah, we could see Clive Christensen back here as an offensive coordinator. We've had that experiment once. It didn't, it go, wasn't, so well. didn't go so hot. You know? <laughs> well, that was so with I Trent don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, was, it was. It was a totally different coaching staff, obviously different Trent players. Dilfer. But Tom Brady, I mean, it's, it's yeah, but we don't have Tom Brady forever. We've we got no, Tom you're Brady right. you're right. you're one right. more year, yeah. and then we then we're looking at maybe Trask. Trask, Trask isn't even dressing for games. What is the deal on it's that? Awful. I don't understand. It's awful. you know, the whole thing's a little crazy yeah. there. Yeah. Do you think Tom right, Brady would, would put up it? with a new OC? <laughs> maybe I don't think or so. He, that's it. I, yeah. I think it goes to the list of all of the things I just named off. If it doesn't line up the way he wants. I don't think he plays next season. And I think I think he'll be slow to make a commitment after the end of this season of what's next, unless they win a Super Bowl. I mm. I don't know. We'll we'll see. But listen, I listen, we could talk about this yeah. obviously for quite a long time. Yeah. I'm gonna 